But then we move on to 205 right now with Ed Short Fuse Herman versus Gerald the Machine Mearsarch at 205 pounds. Ed Herman, he's the American, 24 and 14, 39 years old in his prime, just like Dan Henderson himself said. He did his best at 39. That's what we're seeing from Ed Herman right now. Uh, he's six feet one inches tall. He's a finalist on Tough Season 3 in 2006, and he's been with the UFC ever since then. So he's one of the OGs of the sport, still competing out here and doing well. But he's going against Gerald Mearsarch, uh, who's coming in and bouncing up from 185 to 205, making his debut. On short notice. On short notice. He's uh, 31 and 13 <coughs> overall as a fighter. He's 32 years old. He's 6 feet 1 inches tall, so they're the exact same height. And he's 6 and 5 inside the UFC. Uh, he's 2 and 3 inside of, in, in his last five, though. Uh, he's coming off of a submission win over Darren Wynn. He beat him by rear naked choke. Tell me what you think about these guys. You know, obviously we, we're probably going to have a little bit of bias coming into this one, given Ed Herman's a Portland fighter. Yep. Um, you know, we're big fans of Ed Herman here. Ed has not won back-to-back -back fights since 2011, 2012, where he beat Kyle Noak and Clifford Starks in back-to-back. -back. actually, Ed? Yeah, Ed. He's on a two-fight win streak. I'm getting there, dipshit. Let me get to it. <laughs> Well, outside of 2019, where he, he put together his first win streak In a long time. since 2011-2012, yep. he's had an up-and-down career. Oh, and yeah. at one point, he had lost three in a row um, between 2016, 17, and 18. Yes. So he, he came back. He beat Patrick Cummins. Beat, by knockout with by knees. By knockout. Yep. Beat uh, Kadis Ibrahimov, who we saw fight um, last weekend, I think yes, it was. Yes, who lost. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> he, he's, he's finally got back-to-back -back wins. He's looked calmer in these yeah. fights. Like, he's looked more mature, if that makes sense. Because Short Fuse, that's his nickname. He fought like a Short Fuse, too, if you ever watched that Herman fight. Well, he gets, he gets hot pretty fast, right? Yeah. And, and it's so funny, because as soon as he gets hot, his, a redhead his, thing. his face is red <laughs> as a tomato. And it's the same thing in person. Like, he's a good person in person. Um, just so you guys know, I do know him. He's a uh, wrestling coach locally here. He coaches at Mountain View High School. He's, that's one of the high schools out here. Um, and our, our kids actually wrestled together on the same team. His son, Ed, wrestled with my daughter. And uh, so we do know each other a little bit. He's a nice person overall. He does a lot to help out with the community. Um, he, volunteer, he volunteers with the wrestling team. And at the same time, he's also coaching elite fighters. Yeah. You know, guys Over in there. the UFC. So BJJ you know? Black Belt under so, uh, Fabiano Scherner. Yeah, and, you know, to talk about some of his other accomplishments, like he's got wins over Rafael Natal. Mm -hmm. um, he's beaten Tim Boach. Um, he's also beaten Tim Kadur. So since he's been along, like, he's beaten all these guys that have come up and gone, come up and gone. All yeah. these guys that are supposed to be big names or that they're looking to turn into big names, Ed's been one of the guys knocking them off. Yeah, and he's, you know? he's still around because... He's, he's made a name for himself being a fan fighter. We've talked about that sometimes, a fan yeah. fighter. He puts yeah. on a good show. It's he an entertainment does. sport. He definitely so. does. But, you know, uh, about that, that stuff there, Mearsarch has got 23 submission wins. Yep. 23 submission wins. Like, that's, that's a lot of wins. In MMA. That's not In including, MMA. like, anything outside yeah. of BJJ. 23 no. MMA submission yeah. wins. You know, like we said, it's his 205 debut. He does have six knockouts. He does have two decisions. Um, he, he claims to be like a, a Taekwondo style fighter, but he also has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he has a black belt in kickboxing. Mm -hmm. um, before he signed with the UFC, he was also the uh, RFA middleweight champion. But when we look at it, what do you think? Well, he's another guy who's had kind of an up and down UFC career. You know, you look at, he won his first couple fights coming into the UFC, then he lost to Tiago Santos. Yes. And since then, he's kind of been win, win, loss, loss, win, loss, win, loss. So he, he's another guy who's going to be looking for a uh, looking for that win. Yeah. He, he might need it. I mean, from what I've seen when I watch him fight, I'm not impressed with his stand-up. Given the fact that he, he claims to be uh, this, this, what is he, you know, a black taekwondo belt. guy? You know, he's a taekwondo style taekwondo fighter black belt, and right? a, a kickboxing black belt. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. he... he Oh yeah, it's a kickboxing black belt, but I just did he started, not. He, he didn't started. Look. He started out as a taekwondo fighter yeah. growing up. Okay, that's, and that's where what I got moved that. him into mixed martial arts. He in the just first does place. not yeah. look yeah. good on the feet. Yeah, I'm not impressed. No, um, he he's slow, but he's tough. He's he's really tough. 
Yeah, the way I see it is I think that this is going to be fought a lot in the cage. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to see a lot like with the uh, uh, Ed Herman versus Katie Sabrigamov fight. Um, they're going to be grinding for that position on the cage there. Ed Herman's really good inside of there of landing that dirty boxing stuff, sneaking in some elbows, some uppercuts, some, some body shots with his hands and up to the head. Mm -hmm. And then he's also good at grabbing that head and starting to look for knees. Um, obviously, like in that Cadiz fight, we saw that he's hard to take down. So the fact that he's going to be hard to take down, I think that it's not really going to be going to the ground much. I think that they're both going to be fighting for position up against the cage. Uh, I think round three, after they tire out a little bit, Ed Herman's going to catch him and send him to the mat. I call Ed, th Ed Herman winning by knockout round three. See, for me, I think this fight's going to go really, really similar to two of, uh, um, the hell's his name, Mearshart's earlier fights. Mm -hmm. So if you watch the Kevin Holland fight, Kevin Holland's another good wrestler, and he's actually fighting later on this card, yes. so we can talk about him some more when I get there, but he's another really good fighter mm -hmm. that Mearshart lost to. And I think that one was a split decision. But but Holland was looked like the better striker in that fight and looked like the better grappler, even though uh, Mearshart has 23 submission victories. Yeah. But he's, you know, it's it's one of those things. I think it's going to be similar to either the Kevin Holland fight because Kevin Holland was able to take him down and beat him up on the ground. Yeah. And uh, Or it's going to be similar to the Eric, Pre or the Eric Anders fight. Eric Anders comes in and you know he's more of a striker was able to to strike and beat him up a little bit on the feet but mm -hmm. like i said mirshard's tough he and is tough. anders ended up turning into something what you were talking about more of a clinch game up against the fence and anders was the aggressor in that one controlling the clinch up against the fence and i'm looking at eric anders if he's controlling the clinch ed herman's gonna control this clinch yep but i also think that uh ian Heinis just knocked him out back in june Mm-hmm. And I think Ed Herman's going to knock him out, too. All right. Well, Ed Herman got, has some knockout power, When baby. do you think he's going to knock him out? What round? Round one. I think he's just going to catch him, and he's going to knock him out. All right. Well, we, so we both got a knockout there. It's 185, and... Or, no, they're fighting they're at 205. 205, but, 205 but for this one. But Ed Herman also was an 85-pounder. Right, they both he moved 85ers. Up, and he's had success since he moved up to mm -hmm. 205. So, um, this is... The, you know, it... it it's interesting because it's not like any guy should really be the bigger guy here because they're both former 185 pounders. Right. Um,